This is such an incredible feeling. It's almost two and a half months since I left my home to go on this photography expedition to the Ellesmere Island in Canada. And now I'm standing here on my way home and in less than like four days I'll be back home in Denmark on my little farm and I really miss my friends and my family and my little dog so uh, I, I can't wait. Whew, this expedition has been challenging in many ways. First of all everything like we have planned almost changed um, and I have never in my life spent so much time and so much money on a trip where I have seen so little wildlife and got so few good pictures. But still it has been such a great experience and I have learned a lot from it. I don't want to go into more details with the expedition now because I'm going to make a video all about that, my experience and stuff that I share with you and also I can't wait to come home and actually start making, uh, putting all this footage together to share this expedition with you. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I am so sorry I left without telling you anything about the expedition and how long it would be and when I would be back and that I wouldn't be posting. Um, and that was why I was writing the letter home. I hope you got it through my very good friend Simon who read it up uh, in the last video. Uh, I hope that <laughs> that, was, uh, that was good enough. At least you knew that uh, what was going on. Behind me, look at this. Isn't it just really beautiful? Tomorrow I'll get on a plane and we, we will go uh, further south and in just a few days I'll be back home and as I said uh, I'm missing all the green, I'm missing the trees, my family, friends, uh, the dog, Bjorn, the cat, like basically like the meadow, the forest, everything and at the same time I love being here, it's, it's really wonderful. The purpose of this video is not to tell about the expedition but just to like reconnect to, to all of you and to say hi and to say that I uh, was actually, I had made a video uh, with all my equipment and I'm like uh, the, the skis and pools and food and camera gear and solar panels and telling about it and I wanted to upload that video, I made that in the end of March, I wanted to upload it just before I uh, I left but I had to do some corrections on the video, then I want to upload it from Toronto, then we didn't have time, then I want from Igraluit and then the internet was really bad. <sighs> A lot of excuses, bottom line, you didn't see it, you didn't get that video. But I'm still going to share it after my little talk here. Then I hope you can use some of that about the equipment for and the experience and stuff just for your for your own trips. So just bear in mind when you see it that it was produced like two and a half months ago uh, and I might say some stupid things like see you in two months, it doesn't count. Anyway, I hope you'll like that video. I've put some time codes in it uh, just so you can like go to where you actually, uh, the things that interest you because I strongly doubt that you want to look at me talking for more than an hour. Uh, so that, then you will need an extremely strong coffee. Anyway, ah, the plan now is when I get back home and I have spent some time with all the people I really, really love, is to get to my computer and get some of these footage together from the expedition. Uh, I have so much to catch up on. I need to make that footage. I need to make some stories behind the, the calendar photos. Uh, and I have so many trips planned already, I, like to the forest, to the meadow. And I, ah, I, you can probably, yeah. I'm just uh, talking, talking, talking. I'm so excited about all that. I can't wait to take you out to the forest to look for the for the fox, to see if we can find the badger. We have to go out to look for the roe deer, the red deer, the, the, the birds, the bossards, all that kind of stuff. It's just going to be really, really awesome. Uh, so yeah, probably next time I'll see you will be uh, when we get back to Denmark, 
with a cup of coffee, sitting out looking at the sunrise in the meadow, something like that, before I actually uh, publish my um, expedition videos. So until then, uh, have a really, really good time. And um, yeah, enjoy the video now. I hope you'll like it and then see you back home and see you out there. I'm back from Norway and I'm standing here in my little studio with all this equipment around me. I'm basically surrounded by power banks, batteries, camera equipment, telephoto lenses, computers, pulks, skis, marking tape for color coding, beautiful lady, maps, navigation systems, satellite communication, food making equipment, camera bags, tent, sleeping bags and a lot of clothes. <laughs> All my equipment for my upcoming expedition Ellis Mare where I'm going to the northern part of Canada, Ellesmere Island, to try to make an old dream come true, the dream about just having a glimpse of the Arctic white wolf. Um, I have never seen it, I have never seen a track, and it's one of my biggest dreams, and it has been that for a while. Um, so yeah, and if I'm extremely lucky also to get a picture of it. But all this equipment is for this trip, and I'm actually leaving together with my expedition buddy Anders Bielkamp, who is also packing at this moment back in his house. And I'll be leaving in two days from now, fly to uh, Toronto, from Toronto to Igraluit, Igraluit, uh, Resolute Bay, and then up north to Greasy Fjord, where I will spend together with Anders two months in this beautiful, like, ice desert. It's going to be absolutely awesome. I don't know if you saw my last video from Norway, uh, from Dorfjell, where I actually used the, the tent and the, the pool and the solar panels and I had a storm. Otherwise, I'll leave a link and put some clips to that video while I'm talking about the equipment. This video is going to be all about this equipment and I'm, it's going to be extremely long. So go and make yourself a cup of coffee. I'm going to do that. And then underneath, I'll put a time code so you can jump directly to like a power bank, solar panels, uh, uh, and you can jump to camera, you can jump to uh, food, pools, skis, uh, weapons, like whatever. So you don't have to watch or hear uh, me speaking for like probably more than an hour. Because I'm not going to rush this video. I'm going to take my time to explain all the things that I have spent so much time on setting up and making ready so it, it just works perfect. Because I hope that can benefit you. So without a lot of more introduction, I think it's time to actually jump into uh, going through all this equipment. But first, it, time, it is time for me to make a cup of coffee and I think you should probably do the same. In the meantime, meantime I'm just going to add a little uh, footage from my last video from uh, Dorofjell and then you can uh, enjoy that for a minute uh, while I'm going to, yeah, I don't know why I put it, find my coffee. Uh, so uh, this video is going to be long, but uh, Let's get started.
So, time to start this video. Oh, it's always nice with a cup of coffee. Where to start and where to begin? I think what we're going to do is... Um, Bjorn, look. Bjorn, stop doing it there. Before we start, uh, it's very important to me that um, that you don't think as this as this being the best equipment. Like let's say I use the uh, let's say I use uh, this solar panel from Raw Power uh, or this power bank from something called XT Power. It's it's not because that's the best. It's just because that's the one I have chosen. Go and find the thing that fits your need best and just use all this as an inspiration for like how it could, like <laughs> what equipment you could use. And then you can take my advices and put them together with your own advices. And yeah, it's, I'm not saying this because I think you're stupid. I just, <laughs> I just say this because I know there's also a lot of young people watching and they might just go out and, and say, oh, Morten is using the raw power solar. So that's probably the best. And that's not the case. It's just because I'm not the most patient man in the world. So I don't spend uh, days and weeks uh, looking at different specs. I find something tested and if it works it's good enough for me. So that, I know that was a long boring talk but it's just important for me that you yeah that you don't see this as one big commercial for a lot of gear. So let's get started. Where should we start actually? Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're uh, we're starting in a kind of logical way like with the pulks first because uh, and the skis and stuff because that is what is actually uh, uh, the most important thing. The skis because we can get ahead and the pulks because we need something to, uh, to um, drag our equipment. After that, we go to the backpacks, like the photo pack, the, the backpack, the, the, the packing things. After that, we go to the sleeping bag sleeping mats, tent. After that, we go to all the clothes, uh, what I use there. Um, then we go to the, some of the different tools, navigation, GPS, satellite phone, batteries, maps, uh, just a few things. Then we go to the cooking, I think. And then tripods, uh, solar charging systems. Oh, yeah. oh. The batteries and then camera gear at the end. Maybe I, I might switch, switch something around. And of course the computer system. I'm also going to talk a little about backup, uh, how I do that. I'm going to talk a little about um, uh, the cases I choose, why I choose them and it's going to be long. Let's start over here. One of the big advantages of traveling on snow is the fact that I can drag all, and I say I in this video, it's me and Anas. Uh, I, I just say I, and then it's easier for me. Um, I can drag all my heavy equipment uh, on the pool. And that means that I, on this equip, this trip, I'm going to bring about a hundred kilo. And most of that is actually food and fuel and like spare batteries and stuff. Things that, like the equipment itself, uh, the photo equipment and stuff is not that heavy. It's the fact that we are going to spend uh, six weeks up there in the, <laughs> in the, in the, what do you say, in the freezer um, that makes the expedition so heavy. And of course, safety. The pulk, uh, the way I have uh, chosen to do it is to use the Fjell Pulken, which is a, um, a fiberglass pulk. Um, the reason why I choose this, even though it's like six kilo compared to the Paris pulk, which I'm also bringing, uh, is much lighter, is that this one is very, very heavy duty. And even though we are 
uh, having a, uh, to cross stones or rocks or something, this one will hold up. Another advantage is uh, underneath everything is fiberglass and it has these, uh, it has these um, uh, plastic, like, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like, um, yeah, it's just so that the pulk doesn't slide to the side. Um, it, everything is like very heavy duty where I can put uh, my straps, like these straps into these metal things and it's not going to fall off. It has a built-in cover, meaning that I can cover everything down. And uh, let me just show you a, a few examples when I'm talking from Norway, so you can see uh, how nice it is that everything is covered down when the wind really kicks in. So yeah, as you can see, it's nice with this cover uh, and also that the fact that I can actually put my camera on top and my uh, my my wool sweater on top, I can, like uh, on these uh, elastic straps, and I can have all my loads down in the pool, close it for the wind and the weather and the snow, and then I can uh, tie it with an uh, elastic. And, and put things so it's easy, easy to, uh, to grab my, my camera. Yeah, as my second pulk, I have the Paris pulk, which is a very, very lightweight uh, pulk. It weights nothing and it's uh, surprisingly strong, uh, reinforced uh, with uh, metal uh, here where the strings go through. And um, I have made this system with a, str with a, a string so that I can actually get things down. And this one is a, this is, this one is a RAB bag that can be in the pool so that I can actually have the same benefits of the other pool by sipping this. I drag the pool either in the, in the um, harness or which sitting around the waist and coming up the shoulder or I'm putting it directly in my Klettermusen uh, Tor uh, backpack because it has uh, two metal rings made for the same purpose. That was the pulk. Let's just take the rifle now we are here because uh, there's nothing special about that. The only reason why I'm bringing a rifle is for uh, self-defense. Um, we are bringing a 306 caliber and a shotgun. Um, and the only reason why we bring these is that when you travel, or if you travel to places with polar bears, uh, of course you don't want to shoot the polar bears, but um, in my time in the Sears uh, dog sled patrol, uh, I think I've had like around 50 or 60 uh, polar bears, what you say, encounters where they actually come uh, close and walk around and sniff and stuff like that. Uh, and one single time a polar bear actually attacked us in a, in a, in a cabin, but that's another story. Uh, the rifle you always bring just for safety, not to shoot the bears, but to be able to do warning shots. And in a case of you're in the tent and we have a polar bear alarm around the tent, meaning that when a polar bear comes in, if it does, a flashbang will go off and scare the polar bear away. If that's not enough, we have the rifle, I hope, uh, deep in my heart that I'm not going to use this guy. But uh, yeah. So, for the skis, I'm sponsored by uh, Osnes uh, and they, I used the, the Osnes uh, skis in the, my time in the Special Force in, in, um, in uh, the Sirius Patrol. And I love these skis because they are extremely rough and just because I'm used to them. The skis I'm uh, using for this expedition uh, are the Osnes Gamme. You can see here, let me see, just so you can see a little closer. And um, this is the binding we are using. Very, very uh, solid where you can actually take off these, if you want to, and just use the ski alone. I'll show you the boots a little later. They lock by going down here, like so. That's it. Really nice skis. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, 
because we are dragging such a heavy load, um, you will have a, 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 you will you like kind of the skis will go back every time you try to take a step. So what we're using there are these ones. It's called skins, and uh, these ones are made of uh, mohair. It's basically just a little uh, piece of uh, fabric uh, that you put underneath the skis, like in the right way, and that means that you can slide forward, but you're not going back. This, in combination with skis, is like my absolute favorite when, I, when I'm in the snow. So here, that was a skins. We have, if the skins get worn down, we have some glue uh, to put underneath, uh, like, so uh, we can use that instead of skins. And then we have some extra um, uh, uh, skin glue, so if this one gets uh, not sticky anymore, we can put some more glue on. That was the skis. Yeah, and the, the reason why these skis are used, like this model, because there's so many models out there. First of all, they have a steel edge that makes them uh, very nice, because if it's very hard snow uh, blown by the wind, this one will create a good friction so that we can accidentally uh, break easier and turn easier. Furthermore, they have a deep, um, I don't know what it's called in English, but they have a, 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 a deep thing for the, for the vax if we want to use that. They are very stiff in the length. That means if you are going very slow with a heavy backpack or a, or a pulk, um, if the skis are very soft, you will not uh, glide that, that uh, you'll not uh, <laughs> Oh, my English is not good enough for a video like this, but you'll not um, uh, glide so uh, easily. So they have to be stiff and they have to be heavy duty. And this one also goes a little more out here, so it's easier to actually turn when I'm going downhill. So these um, skis are designed by Osnes and this guy, uh, Alexander Gamme, um, who walked the South Pole. So these are designed for exactly the expedition I'm going on now, things like that. Yeah, the poles uh, are a little uh, different than uh, normal ski poles. And that is because, as the first thing, if you are a skier, you will notice that they are quite short uh, compared to normal. These one are measured, so they are 10 centimeter uh, underneath here. When I stand up 10 centimeter from the ground and up here, uh, because, and this one is very long. And that's because if you're walking, imagine I'm walking on skis and I go like so with a heavy pull, everything dragging here, locking my blood circulation, uh, and I have my hands over uh, above heart level, then my fingers will get very cold. So you want your hand to go below heart level. That's why they are so short and gives a good option for having the hand further down. So I'll have my hands down here. Um, they come with uh, this one to click on and then extra um, extra, um, extra one of these because in Norway I broke one of them. So an extra pair of, of these. And a ski bag. I think that was the whole thing about the pools and the skis. And um, uh, the most important thing here for me is to not be lazy up there. Because if we come to a place with rocks and stones, uh, and you're cold and you just want to get to the tent, you're tempted just to walk there with your skins on. But it's important to, like on an expedition, never be lazy because your, your equipment has to last for, in this case, six, six weeks on the ice and you don't afford to mess something. Oh, by the way, here, even though there are the faces up here, they are sometimes covered with snow. And just so it's easy to see uh, what ski, I know that my left ski is the red and my right ski is the green. And the reason why I have one on each is just if one falls off, I, I still, you know, if I only had the red on and not the green, uh, if the red fell off, I didn't, I would not know. But now I have both and I can, of course, always put it on again. That was the skis. Let's move on. For the backpacks, um, these two are just for the transportation in the airport because they can have a lot, so they are not interesting. These two are for the pulk to actually pack things in uh, with a red and a silver uh, tape on it, so I know that the red is the food, for instance, uh, which it is in this case, and the silver would be clothes. 
So uh, that's a color coat, so you don't have to go through all your bags. And I always place them on the pool the same way in exactly the same location. So I know exactly where to go down if I want extra clothes, if I want camera gear, if I want uh, my, my uh, uh, multi-fuel stuff or anything. I uh, got a new bag uh, of one simple reason. Um, my low pro, uh, the one you have seen, is probably about 10, 10 years old now, uh, maybe even more. And uh, the the zippers have started to to uh, to go. Uh, what to say? Kaputski. Uh, <laughs> they have started to fall apart, and the bag is extremely soft in everything. So I thought this is time to get a new one. When I come home, I'm going to repair the zippers on the other one because it's still a nice bag. But I got this new Low Pro uh, Pro Trigger 600 AV. Um, I bought that a week ago, uh, so I, st I still haven't made modification. And, but I'm going to make some modification because there are some obvious stupid things on this bag. And I'm going to uh, show you them right now. Um, let's just take it out here where we have more light so you can actually see what I'm doing. The bag itself is pretty awesome. With the, it's very thick and it's a little taller than my uh, old bag. That means my 600 with the camera can easily be here. What I really love is that the zipper here is not this uh, waterproof thing, but it just glides like my very first low pro bag. I'm really happy. The rest is more or less the same. There are some few differences that I don't really care about. But the stupid thing is, first of all, when you have to lock the back, the side of the back here, this one locks like so. And I mean, who has designed that? Because then you have to open that every single time. And the same with this, you want to get in the back or get in this one. So uh, this one, hi. This one, I want to lock here instead so that I can lock the sides and still get into the back. Um, the problem is now that uh, <laughs> I, I thought I could steal these ones uh, from the, from the, I'm not going to use them. I thought I could steal them, but <laughs> they don't fit. So uh, I have to figure something out. Hopefully I can do that in Toronto. So yeah, that was the back and um, that is going to carry my all my camera equipment, all the things that I'm going to use, drones, extra clothes, it's basically going to do the same as my old low pro did, so I'm happy. Um, I'm looking forward to trying this bag. Yeah, let's go to the actual backpack. The backpack I'm going to, uh, to wear is the Klettermusen Tour. Um, it has a really, really good carrying system and uh, these small rings that I can use for actually uh, dragging the pulk. And the reason why I'm wearing a backpack, because normally it's really nice not to have a backpack on because you get air to your back. But because of all my camera equipment, um, I'm going to put sleeping bag and sleeping mats and some clothes, all these very light things in the backpack because it fills up a lot but has no weight and then I can have better space on the pools for the heavy equipment. So uh, yeah, that's a tour. So this is uh, the tent, the Hilleberg uh, Keon uh, 3GT, uh, my favorite expedition tent. Like if I should go on this expedition alone, and uh, I think on my uh, upcoming expeditions or trips, this is my tent of choice. This is a ton, tunnel tent. I will show you some footage while I'm talking, where you can actually see the tent in use on the last video. Um, this tent is a tunnel tent, and I, the reason why I love it so much is because it is so easy to uh, take up and down, even in the blizzard from the last trip. Uh, as you can see, I'm like, I walk down from this valley and I, like it was less than uh, 20 minutes from it was totally silent until the storm really kicked in less than 20 minutes and in that time i had to find a place it was getting dark get my tent up and i strongly doubt that i could have taken up like 
a, a, a what do you call that, a dome tent in these conditions alone, but this one was absolutely no problem. Um, uh, that is the, what I really like about it. And then the huge apsis I really like too, that I can actually sit out there and have my uh, coffee, have my, my food and, and stuff. And it, the weight is, is very good. And I think that is why it's uh, the, the, the tent of choice and this kind of, of tents are the tent of choice for many expeditions where you are like, go walking every day and don't make a, like a decent base camp. For this expedition, we are trying a new tent. Um, uh, a, a, a dome tent, six person dome tent. You'll probably see a lot of that tent in the expedition videos in, uh, in about two months from now. I'm still bringing the tent for two reasons. First of all, because if the other tent fails, I know this one is not going to fail. Uh, and second, we have a spare tent if something happened to the other. And third, uh, sometimes if I'm doing uh, some video or some foot, uh, uh, like all my camera, I, I will fill up a lot of space in the tent. And it can be nice to, to be able to like have a little privacy and just like say, um, now I go and, and write my diary and I go and do my, uh, my uh, I'm going to do my voice uh, or what's up there and I'm just, you know, sit and concentrate on some photos. It's nice to have an extra tent actually. Plus it's nice to have an extra tent if we go through the ice and get wet and we need to dry everything. It's nice to have two tents where we can actually dry the stuff. Modification I have made on this tent is with a string here. I have drilled some small holes. Uh, I explained that in the last video, so let me just show you a few clip. The reason why I had my tent in this long bag instead of a normal pack that you get it in when you buy it is because it's much faster when I will pull to get up this way. See, this one uh, 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 gathered with a gaffer tape, and uh, that means that they will not go apart, and I have sewn them to this end. You can see I have uh, drilled a little hole there and um, these holes can be used with a string. I'm going to uh, sew all these uh, to the bottom of the tent as I show in the video. That means that they don't come out, uh, they don't like go out when they're in the back. So that means for now I can basically just um, uh, join the, the, the poles two places each and then I can uh, take the tent out and get it up and that means that uh, if I'm not filming and talking to, to you uh, from my decide to get my camp up till the tent is there the sleeping bag is in and the mattress is up and I'm actually sheltered is less than uh, 10 minutes so uh, that's that's quite nice so yeah let's get it up So last thing is this, uh, we haven't put it in yet because we, we need to fit it so it's in this tent and the other tent. And I got hold of this a few days ago. It's a, it's a, ne like a, what is it, a web that you uh, cut on the middle and put up uh, in the tent with uh, some strings. And that is very, very good, like a gear net and a place where you can dry your clothes. Furthermore, I have added loops to all the small uh, guidelines so that I can easily uh, fold them together and, and uh, lock them so they're not everywhere. These are the standard pegs, and these are the snow pegs, and these are some homemade 
picks. Let me show you. These ones are the standard that uh, you can get into very uh, hard ground or very hard snow. These ones are snow picks. Very good either for putting down like this or like I did in Norway, put them down so and just drag them up here that they make a very, very good anchor. These one are homemade, as light as the aluminum almost. Um, just for the same reason, you can put them down in the snow, dig them down and then have the string coming up there. Then we have spare poles for the tent, uh, just in case of one is bending. I'm not bringing spare poles for this one, but we have a double set of pole for the other tent, which is the uh, Heelsport Svalbard 6. Yeah. So, the sleeping bag I'm bringing on this trip is the um, Western Mountaineering Bison. Um, it is a down sleeping bag, go down to minus 40, and that's Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's the place where the two scales are actually the same, so minus 40. Um, the good thing is this one is uh, it has a wind stopper. That means that I can actually be outside in this sleeping bag and still be fine. Um, it's down and the, 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 the good thing about down is it's very light, it's very comfortable because you can breathe. The bad thing about down is on an expedition like this, it will, when you are sweating, all the water, all the moisture will make the down collapse and makes it cold. And we will probably get down to about minus 30, 35 uh, Celsius degrees at the most. So I think I'll be fine. It's, it's, uh, I have had colder temperatures than that, and I know that I'm not a cold sleeper. So um, uh, a sleeping bag like this, the coldest uh, I have ever experienced uh, is minus 51 degrees. And while it was cold, you know, see, I'm still alive. So that was absolutely gorgeous. Especially, oh, it's like a, it's like a down temple. It's, it's so good. Uh, a few modifications. No, first, um, when you get this wet sleeping bag, uh, there's actually uh, two things to do. Uh, either you can uh, dry it in the top of the tent um, or you can just, like if everything goes wrong, you can just take, I can just take my down jacket, and my down pants, take them down because they are dry. So that'll be fine. And it, it will eventually dry just by lying next to the, to the stuff in the tent. A few uh, tips though is um, when I'm in my sleeping bag, I am wearing a, a thing like this, which is a little balaclava. And uh, if you look at this, see it has the, the eyes and it has a nose and it has a, a breathable hole. And um, the, the good thing about that is when you're getting so cold, you will automatically get your head down here and you want to sip it. And that means that you are breathing down there. And that means that through your breathing, you can like almost uh, throw out a liter of water together with your sweat during the night. And you don't want that liter of water in here. Um, the problem is uh, that the, it's warm in here and it tries to travel through the membrane, but out here it's, it's, it's uh, so cold that it becomes actually ice before it gets out of the sleeping bag. Two things you can do about that is one, you can either take a thin fiber bag to put on top, that creates a layer of air so that the condensation will be locked between the two layers. In the morning then, you take the down sleeping bag off and you can basically uh, wait for this to freeze and you can take it off like that. Uh, I do a little lighter version with my Expedition uh, Arctic bed here. Um, it's a Carincha, uh, a heavy duty uh, little thing that I put on top and that means that I can create this layer of air that will just be warm enough for the uh, moisture to travel all the way out. Another thing is uh, when you have this mask on, uh, you, it's nice to have your face out. That means you're breathing out here instead of into the sleeping bag. A last thing, a little tip is uh, I always, even though it's very cold, because when I go to bed, uh, I'm, I'm warm because the body is, is running. So I often take the sleeping bag up and then I fall to sleep and then I wake up freezing a little bit and then I lock it because then all my sweat and the heat has gone out. Uh, with a sleeping bag, there's a few things to, to think about. First of all, you want to uh, have some kind of strings on your zippers so that they are easy to grab from inside and from outside with, with your gloves or very cold fingers. Because on an expedition, 
sometimes, or a trip out there when it's cold, you're basically not able to use your finger, especially not in an emergency. So it's nice. Another thing is down here, you have, I have kind of sewn this little bit. That means this one cannot come down and this one cannot come up. If you're the type of person that likes to open from down to get your feet a little colder, you put the stitches like behind this one and put this a little up. The advantage of that is that you can open the button. The, the disadvantage of that is that you can, um, uh, you, you can, this one can come up. So it, it basically unzips a little during the night. Um, and furthermore, this just makes it super stable. So basically, because you don't want this to unzip, I've tried that many times when I take the sleeping bag on, cold, shaking, and then it it, it goes there and you, and you sit with your fingers and try to get them work and you get impatient and then you destroy something. So a few stitches right there is good. Yeah. Let's put it there. When it comes to the sleeping mat, I use like a, a double system. In the bottom, I, has a, I have a Fjellraven uh, normal sleeping pad, quite thick. And the good thing about that is it can puncture and it's warm and nice and it's very lightweight. The disadvantage is that it feels a lot and it, by itself it's not comfortable and warm enough. Um, therefore, I have a Thermarest and in this case I have a Luxury Map uh, in large because I'm willing to care a little extra. Uh, uh, I'm willing to pay with weight to get a very good and comfortable sleep. Therefore, um, I'm going for the thick Luxury Map, uh, not the XL, uh, but the large. And it has, like, the good thing about this mattress is that it uh, has a more insulation uh, on the places where you have a high pressure, like the shoulder, the, the hips and, and the feet where, where you, you tend to be cold. So that's really good. The disadvantage about this one is that it can puncture up there and then it's worth nothing. Then you can try to sit there in your tent and find a tiny little hole, but um, a way of doing that is just to take a little soap in the water and just drag it on and then you might see a little bubble come up and then you can repair it. Uh, you can put this one in a, in a thing like this guy to make it not puncture, but again, every time you add things, it's just becoming more complicated to pack it and unpack it. So this one in combination with this is a good mix because this one will prevent small things from actually uh, damaging this. It's also better to take out, uh, uh, out from the tent uh, when you want to sit out there because, yeah, then you have something uh, where Anas and I can sit and have a cup of coffee out there, outside the tent. Um, there are two ways, actually, there are probably more, but there are two ways of, uh, uh, of doing this when you're traveling. One is to use an Arctic bag, a bed, a proper Arctic bed, and then you just basically take the, the air out here, leave the sleeping bag on, and, and, and have this in, in a kind of a, a, a purse, and then you take that one. That was what we did on, Sir on the Sirius uh, patrol in this uh, military unit. And then we, we basically imagine the sleeping bag, everything here, and then you just zip the Arctic bed, close it there and then you put it on the dog sled or you can fold it one time and put it on the pool. The advantage of that is that you can basically just take the whole thing into the tent, zip it up and then you're ready to go to sleep and, and, and blow in a little uh, air in this one. Uh, then you're ready to go to sleep. The disadvantage in my case is that uh, I'm not just going from A to B, A to B, A to B. I need to photograph, I need to make video, I need to make photographs. So I need to, I don't want this one on top of my pool so it covers everything. I need to be able to get to my camera equipment, my drone, some extra clothes because there will be a lot of starting, stopping, starting, stopping. So I'm packing these things down every day together with a sleeping bag and put it in my uh, Klettermusen Thor, Thor backpack. Yeah, that was the sleeping. Yeah, this is a section of clothes that is actually uh, separated from the other. I have three pile of uh, clothes. I have like a, a, a everyday clothes, like out tracking the pulk, being outside photographing clothes. 
and then I have an emergency pack closed, and then I have... Hvad laver du? There are like, I think, 60 square meters in here where you could sleep. Dude, it has to be right here. No, I have these three uh, packs of uh, clothes and this is like my tent pack. And the purpose of that is like, you have to imagine that you are dragging the pool up there, sweating, uh, sweat is running off you, you're wet and everything is fine. The moment you stop and it's very cold, uh, let's say 30 degrees Celsius minus, uh, then you will just get very cold because uh, the whole thing about insulation is not to just add th a thick layer. It's not the fabric itself that keeps you warm, it's the the, the, the still standing air uh, that keeps you warm. That means that if you just have a, a thick layer of, let's just say, wood on you or rubber uh, with no air in it, it will get extremely cold. But if you have, uh, like, let's say you could, you could have a, a suit that you could blow up, uh, blow up, it would be like extremely warm. That is why down is extremely warm because it is puffing up and become very, very insulating because there's a lot of air that stands still between the layers. And then, of course, you have to block the wind so that the wind cannot disturb that st standing still air. Um, that is also why when down collapses, it's really shit, but, uh, and, and sometimes fiber can be better because even in a wet condition, a micro a fiber or fleece or uh, you know, a, a, a fiber sleeping bag will still keep you uh, quite warm. So, um, that is why I have my indoor clothes. And the indoor clothes is, um, is basically so that every time I come into the tent, I'm taking off all the wet, even though it's cold to get it off. I force myself to take all the wet clothes off. And then I add a, a sweater, merino wool, uh, this is a Devolt uh, with a high neck with a zipper in it. This one, get that dry thing on my body. I have a pair of, uh, um, uh, no, wool, yeah, wool pants. I don't know if I said down, it's wool. But the <laughs> wool uh, um, trousers. Um, I have two pair of gloves. One that is a little warmer, one that I can use with, uh, with like my uh, touch things, uh, like my uh, GPS or whatever. Um, I have a little hat, micro fleece uh, to take on just to prevent heat loss. I then have my down boots, which they pack down very small. So now I'm actually sitting there with very warm with very warm <laughs> clothes. I then have a, a fiber jacket, a fiber jacket here uh, that can keep me uh, warm if, I, if I'm a little uh, cold. I have then just normal uh, running clothes, very thin fabric. And the reason why I have that is because if I want to get out from the tent, just to fix something outside, just to do something, Bjorn. Um, I then can take this on to prevent a lot of snow coming into to the, the wool and the, the down. Yeah, that's basically my indoor clothing. So, and two balaclavas for uh, uh, sleeping uh, and for going out if it's really stormy. So uh, this is always in a bag inside my sleeping uh, uh, bag when I'm Arriving into the tent, I take the bag uh, from my uh, backpack, put it into my, uh, my sleeping bag uh, as the first thing. And when I then come into the bed and the mattress has, uh, has pumped itself a little bit, the sleeping bag has gained something. I know exactly this is down my sleeping bag and now it's just to change. Then I change the clothes, take all the wet stuff, hang it up so it can dry the moment I start to, 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 uh, to uh, the pump the Primus uh, thing. And then I have dry clothes on while the other clothes is getting dry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go through the clothes. Let's start uh, with gloves and hats and stuff. 
two pair of gloves. These one, you have probably seen my Hestra, the green ones. They are worn down now, the skin is uh, broken. So a new pair of Hestra three finger gloves uh, with an, a liner that I can actually take out. To be able to use my uh, camera, I often take these liners out and use these gloves with a, a cheap pair of uh, woolen kind of uh, gloves. Um, these ones are for taking around the arms and that's really good because when I'm uh, using these with my camera and suddenly needs to change the memory cards, the worst thing that happens is that these ones flow away, or flew away, so I can do so, do the things and they are not going anywhere. These will be my everyday gloves. These ones are down gloves, uh, it's a North Face Himalaya mitt and they are just very good when you just have extremely cold fingers and the temperature just drops on a clear day. These are the cheap uh, gloves uh, or just standard um, woolly gloves, very thin. The good thing about them is that uh, I can use my camera with them on and I, I'm, I'm not so bad with my fingers. I don't need it to be too warm. These ones are um, wool uh, things and the, the, the way I use them, I don't know if the camera, I can't see the screen, but these are extremely good and my favorite because you take them on like so and um, normally like so and then if you have the very cold wind coming in um, you can take them up like, like this. And what I like about these compared to like a micro uh, fiber and fleece is that they continue to stay quite soft and they, it's so nice to breathe through them. When I breathe now, I, I, I can't feel if it's there or not. And then when this one freezes and get an ice pantry here, you basically just turn it around like so you will have the eyes out here and a new fresh uh, thing to breathe through. Um, you can also take them up like so. I know this is not a fashion show, but then you can like just use them like this to cover your ears. I love these ones and they are extremely cheap. I have bought them on these military, what are called military uh, uh, supply places where they have leftover things from the military. A softer version of that. Uh, very uh, thin fabric, uh, very nice and comfortable for when it's getting a little warmer. For the hats, I have um, different options. I have a, a, the Belaclava here um, for like, you can have on like so. And they are really, really nice when it's very windy together with my uh, gloves here. Like this combination is, is pretty awesome. So. I have two balaclavas because they are really getting frozen. And then I have this one for so around the ears, so I can still breathe from the head, and that is very good for when walking. My hats, clatamus and thin merino wool hat uh, for everyday use, a little thing my good friend Vinke has made for me, and she has been so kind. I don't know if that. It's like this all around the world, but in she has needed this. I don't know what this is called, but in Denmark, this little thing here uh, brings a uh, very good luck. Uh, clover, cl I don't know what it's called, but it's a little flower with four leaves and it should bring you luck. And he has made that so it can hopefully bring me luck so I can see the wool. This is to take down like so. See? So it, you can basically have this uh, warming all around your neck. She has also knitted me a little hat in uh, Icelandic wool. And uh, this is the hat I was wearing on the last video also. My favorite hat with a little uh, f a micro fleece in here so that you don't get... Uh, so it doesn't... Uh, the, the wool doesn't make your ear scratch. So yeah, that was all the hats and all that. Let's go to the other clothes. Thin socks, like running socks, three pair of underwear for six weeks. <laughs> yeah, anyway, my uh, gray uh, Kladermusen thing, uh, very, uh, uh, like it's a f uh, the fiber thing, uh, very thin, good for walking. Um, woolen socks, I'm bringing probably six pair, just have two here, woolen insoles for the 
boots just to add a little warmth some uh, special things to put in to uh, uh, prevent too much damage on the foot and to hopefully heal old damage from the Sears Patrol uh, some Oakley sunglasses with a uh, with a um, case uh, and what I like about this one is that they come very far to the to the side to prevent the damaging uh, UV light to, to hit the eyes also a pair of uh, these are Oakley uh, with a yellow um, uh, goggles with yellow glass uh, so if there if there's a white out that will uh, in, in increase the contrast in the snow and makes it easier to see uh, potential drops and stuff for the clothing I'm having some fiber pants just if on for the very cold days I'm having a merino wool uh, uh, hooded uh, little thing here uh, very thick with a pocket there uh, to also for the very cold days for the normal days I'm wearing these beautiful uh, a web thing and I will spare you for the view of me in these it's not that it's not that sexy so uh, but the good thing about this is uh, uh, it creates that layer of uh, still standing air from your legs to the to the to the to the other trousers you have on and it lets you breathe and it's it's my favorite underwear uh, and I have that in a, in, a, in a shirt also and then I have this uh, uh, um, what is it called like a hybrid model where you have the the web it's a, a klima uh, where you have the web on the back and on the the, the 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 stomach and then on the sides and on here where you have a, a backpack you actually have like a let me show you up closer you have like a normal fabric up where you have the, the backpack and then you have the webbing down where you really are, are sweating um, an emergency sack or whatever I don't want to go through because it's basically just a mirroring of my uh, normal clothes so that I can take gloves, uh, socks, uh, 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 trousers, uh, uh, underwear and stuff so that is going in that emergency pack meaning that if we go through the ice and everything is wet and we're in a really bad situation there will be chocolate, there will be uh, some uh, uh, water, uh, there will be close so that we can basically take that one thing instead of having to go through all the equipment uh, we can go through that waterproof bag I have marked with a, a cross and then I can get totally changed and Anna's has the same the boots uh, are probably the most important for this because this one the fingers and the toes are definitely the easiest places to get frostbites and to get uh, really really bad injuries um, so for every day, I have these uh, uh, Alpha Expedition boots. Um, we have been lucky that the Alpha boot has give us, given us a discount uh, on the boots for this expedition. These are uh, for Anna's. These are my old boots, so they have already been out there, um, as you can probably see. The special thing about boots like this is that if you have a hard boot that is squeezing your, your toes you will freeze and these ones are soft and it's just a thin layer of here leather and fabric and they are so soft even the sole is very soft and this one is can just come out meaning that this is very thin there's no insulation here also so if this one gets wet it doesn't matter because it's just a thin fabric the, the way I've done the lasers is that I haven't taken the lasers all the way out to the to the front foot because it's always the toes you are freezing. This one lets me tighten the boots but still leaving room out here. So I start by leaving two of these and starting the lacing up here. These ones are to improve uh, uh, tightness and to uh, uh, take off stress from these ones. Uh, it's a Vibram a sole with that uh, classic 75mm uh, binding uh, for the skis. These boots are also good because they are very flexible. The sole is made of a rubber that is very uh, good for icy and slippery surfaces because it's soft. This one can be taken out and that's basically two things. It's like a, um, a fabric here of a fiber um, and it's a woolen insole. 
that you that is uh, it's possible to take this out and dry it on the primu. So the first thing I do when I come in and I'm taking off these boots, putting my woolen boots on, no my uh, my, my uh, downy boots. So take these out, dry them in the top of the tent so that they are ready for the next day. And then next morning it's just to put them back in and then we are good to go. Yeah. This one I have used since 2008. Uh, uh, these are Steger Mocklocks and uh, I like them because they are so soft. It's so, they are so good for slippery surfaces. They are so extremely warm and they are very, very lightweight. So basically when I come to a camp, uh, I take my hiking, uh, my ski boots off, get them to dry, and I take these very comfortable boots on. They are uh, extremely nice, really, really nice. Yeah. Whoop. So, that was the close, almost. We just need the last bits. My favorite trousers for winter expeditions. These are the <laughs> one and only for me, Klatermusen Freke pants. They are bloody expensive. And when I first, when I bought my first pair, I was thinking this is going to be a lie. They have done something wrong with the price. I think they were extremely overpriced. But I have to admit that uh, I've had these uh, trousers now for quite a few years and they are like when uh, I talked to Klettermusen about, uh, about this expedition and about the gear that they sponsor us, I say like, thank you so much, but you don't, send, you don't need to send me another pair of, uh, pair of uh, freak pants because my old one are like, they can take at least uh, five more expeditions because, before they have to re be replaced. I love these. Uh, the, the good thing about them is it's Gore-Tex, it's a shell. They are very, very, you can see me walking on, in them in my uh, video, um, uh, in that snowstorm and in, in a sunny, on a sunny day. And I use them all the time because first of all, I like this system. It comes up, cover you uh, around here where it's always, um, it's always coming apart. It has, uh, it's a very, very rough fabric with a kev Kevlar reinforced on the, on the knees and on the legs. Uh, the option of putting in uh, knee pads in the, in, the, in the knees. So every time you kneel down, you protect your knees. Furthermore, uh, uh, it has a stretch on the butt so that when you sit down and stuff, they just stay where they are. You can take them all the way down in the side when you need some air and when you need to, when you go there and you might have a bad stomach or you don't want it to last 10 minutes before you can go on the, on the toilet, you have all your equipment on, you can basically just unzip the butt and take it down. And I know it's, it, it's kind of weird uh, thing to, to, to talk about, but it's just so important out there, um, things like that. In the bottom of these uh, pants or trousers, uh, you have, have a locking mechanism, you have a built-in gaiter that uh, goes here and underneath your boots and of course you can take them up. Enough about them. Uh, Klattermusen again, uh, uh, like this one, uh, uh, a thin fleece. My Irvin, uh, no it's not my Irvin, it's my Rimfaxe jacket. The one I've also been using on a lot of videos. It's basically like, it's an ice jacket, uh, but I mean, Nothing special about this. It's not, I'm not so, uh, it's only my down jacket and my pants or trousers that I'm really excited about. This one is just awesome. It's, it's uh, like other good cotton jackets. Uh, cotton here, very breathable, not waterproof. It doesn't have to be in the cold. With big pockets, uh, good, nice, uh, uh, big zippers instead of the waterproof ones. Uh, very heavy duty and the option of, of zipping up and down there. Um, definitely a great expedition jacket. My belt here with, a, with my knife and my Garmin inReach just for safety. All, n this one should always be on me. My Irvin, no my, uh, again, my three quarter length down, uh, 
um, trousers here that go just uh, below the knee because then my mock locks go up here and you have this big down uh, trousers sometimes it's annoying that it's so it fills up so much everywhere this one gives you heat where you need it the most <laughs> and my beloved even jacket which is not in the Klatermusen collection anymore and that is a shame and I hope they will bring back an expedition jacket in this caliber instead of the smaller ones but I hope they will um, because this is so awesome. It's uh, very warm, it's very lightweight, it's reinforced in the shoulders, it has a perfect uh, uh, hat, big pockets, it's just, yeah, I love this. So let's start with the tripods because uh, this one I'm going to use for the vlogging camera so we can get a little higher up when I'm showing you the equipment. Um, little one here, uh, it's just a gorilla thing for my uh, GoPro and for my vlogging camera and for that kind of stuff. And this one is the Gizzo, uh, I can't remember the number but I will uh, put a link in my gear list with the Manfrotto video head and <laughs> like yeah it's called MVH502H. The video head I like because I do a lot of uh, video and it, it gives me these smooth movement instead of so a jackery shaking thing. On top, when I'm using my uh, little camera to make it more uh, flexible, I have made a little uh, system with a, uh, let me just see if I can get this off. Just a, wow, where is it? Oh, everything turns. It's just basically a Manfrotto plate with a little quick release uh, Arca style uh, plate on top. But uh, normally I will just use the 600 right there. But this one I have here so it doesn't get lost in the post. The small rig uh, adapter here so that I can put my microphone on. Um, of course I have a little issue with that because it will uh, uh, pick up the, um, the noise, uh, noise reduction from the, no not noise reduction, <laughs> vibration reduction from the, from the big lens, but it's better than nothing. And then if I see something and suddenly hear a sound, like in uh, the, the, the ptarmigans in my last video from Norway, I can just switch off the uh, vibration reduction and then I get good sound with my Rode VideoMic Pro. So now it's time to go through a lot of the accessories, uh, navigation, safety, maps, uh, and the food part of it. So first of all, we have maps here over the entire area and they need to be cutted and made ready. I'll do that tonight here. Card map um, for the first part of the of the trip and uh, this is uh, so I can put a map in here or I can slide and put a map in between the two plastic things. This is the same one I had in the military uh, and I just like it because I can put it somewhere and uh, secure it to the pool and it's easy to just fold and have underneath my jacket or something. Navigation is a crucial thing on such an expedition so you don't first of all get lost and uh, second uh, know where you are. So um, I'm having my uh, Garmin uh, GPS map uh, 66ST uh, for naviga navigation purposes um, and of course a compass just to be able to actually uh, take a, a look, take a direction, um, find a place in the, in the distance like a mountain or something and then walk towards that mountain for maybe a day or two without having to turn on the GPS all the time. For the GPS I've calculated uh, one set of batteries per week because I'm only turning on the GPS maybe two times a day. I'm using the Energizer Lithium. This one is like very heavy duty, things that you can like put together. I use that for my hard drives and like things like that. Um, a little thingy for the sewing equipment, just with a little uh, string and some needles to repair. My homemade it's just for papers, a little organizer, some string, uh, some earplugs for 
rifle situation, some some tools for the tripods, for the uh, for the skis, and Leatherman with the different options as <laughs> as Leathermans are known for. Uh, some two component glue, uh, tape for repairing sleeping bags, uh, tent, all kind of stuff, brush for brushing off uh, snow when we get into the tent. For the food, like we are bringing extra protein because uh, we need some extra protein in the beginning because um, of uh, a lot of uh, walking. Um, we have two thermal, uh, the Stanley and the new Stanley, which is a supposed to be able to keep things warm really long. Um, we are bringing different uh, systems. Uh, Anas has uh, um, um, a Primus uh, and I'm bringing my beloved to Whisperlite, uh, all the new model with two pumps, uh, one spare and one for uh, everyday use. Some bottles, we are going to uh, get some more in Toronto. Uh, some lighters, fire steel just in case, uh, matches, um, which I, I prefer to use. Nalgene bottles with uh, insulating thing. Something to eat off for the breakfast. A cup for the coffee. Whoop. A pot, it's just an aluminium uh, pot we use for melting snow. It's not that exciting, such a thing. So uh, the snow will be melted in this one uh, with the help of this one and the and the uh, and the uh, fuel and be filled into these in the in the evening and in the morning. This equipment is just to fill up these ones. This is the uh, food we're using the uh, Drytech Real Tourmat. It's a Norwegian brand, and uh, the expedition is sponsored by. Uh, this company and this is of course not everything we are bringing we have like food enough for two men for <laughs> for um, uh, about uh, a month and a half out there so uh, yeah this is just the one i also had in my last movie uh, my definitely my favorite really really nice food and now i think for uh, what most of you are very interested in uh, the um, let's save the best for last all the photo equipment, power banks, uh, computers, and like how this is basically <laughs> what I've spent the most time on because the rest of the stuff is kind of routine for me from my previous expedition and time in the, the dog sled patrol. But uh, this has been, uh, this is the first time I'm going off grid um, for so long time without uh, any option for charging. Yes, I have been. Uh, six weeks uh, before on the series patrol, but that's like 12 years ago with a uh, with a D3X Nikon and a lot of batteries and just uh, I could limit myself to uh, 50 photos per day. This is going to be different first of all because I am going to um, make video. I'm going to hopefully create a lot of uh, good content that I can share with you when I come home. Um, I pray for that. Um, so there's a lot of things going on here. I did uh, a little uh, shake around in my camera bag uh, because I have uh, sold my Nikon D5 uh, because I cannot use uh, this battery for that. Uh, and I cannot charge it with a solar panel without a huge amount of equipment. What I've done now is that I have narrowed it down to some other cameras. I have uh, done a, 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 a dual solar panel system so that if one fails, I still have one. Uh, everything here is more or less like uh, made so that I can uh, still uh, get the job done even though something fails. So um, to start with, let me just uh, go a little forth and back from the table because the challenge of going on a trip like this is that I cannot charge my batteries with every, uh, other things than the solar panel. So. Um, Actually, before I started to, to, to uh, choose my camera equipment, I thought, what, is, what, is, uh, a, what, I'm, what am I able to bring? The weight, the output and stuff. So um, it was narrowed down to uh, solar panels like these foldable, uh, I think it's a 24 watt uh, solar panels, in this case from uh, Raw Power. They have uh, three USB ports, one in here that I use for spare and two coming out. 
it will output 5 volts 2.4 uh, ampere um, uh, max on each of these ports uh, and in total it can output from like from two ports because it will give uh, 5 uh, volt 4.8 ampere that means that I, I'll get the most of the solar panel by using two of these at the same time. Uh, I've been measuring the outcome with this little device so I can actually see how much I can charge and in one full day I'll be able to charge um, uh, two power banks uh, I think it's 20,000 uh, 20, milliampere or something this one yeah 20,000 and uh, if I put this one on here this one on there um, I'll be able to charge two power banks in a full day of sun which is quite amazing because you have to bear in mind that we have midnight sun. The, what I have done here is that I have uh, bought these Anchor uh, very heavy duty cables because I made a freeze test where I put these cables and cables like this, normal plastic cables that come with the things and these are crap because they will just snap in a short period of time and become very stiff where these ones are staying very good. Um, this is the micro USB which I don't like so much so I try to go to the USB-C uh, cable. Uh, so you can see over here I have two of them. Here I have one USB-C and one micro USB. And that is because on the uh, this one, this power bank is mainly used for charging my batteries for the uh, set 6, set 7 and the uh, uh, 850. The batteries are all marked with numbers so that I can see what batteries are used and not used. Let me go back to the batteries. These power banks are made for uh, charging these batteries with these chargers that I bought. This is a, 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 a Nikon, a, a Kopi uh, charger uh, and the reason why I love them is because they have a micro USB and a USB-C port so that gives me double safety and I can use this connector that I definitely prefer to the micro USB. So two sets of chargers, uh, two sets of batteries, three sets of cable, two sets of power banks and two sets of, of uh, solar panels. The solar panels here folds out like so and they can be either hanged up on the tent like you can see in my video or they can be placed on the ground standing up. Um, what is uh, The reason why I have two different power banks is uh, uh, for my Mavic drone I have an, uh, a problem and that is that Mavic will charge up with uh, only uh, the, the cigar thing. Uh, it needs 12 volt. So this power bank, most power banks do the 12 volt thing but the problem is then they, they, they have to be charged from the wall charger or another 12 volt thing. This one on the other hand they charge with a micro USB in and then I have a variable volt output so I can charge uh, three Mavic Air batteries from zero to full with one of these power banks. Um, so I brought two of them that will charge up my Mavic Air. Uh, and to do that uh, I, need, uh, I needed some equipment which is, let's just see, I need uh, the Mavic Air uh, car charger and then this little thing that go from a, from a, um, <laughs> that go from such a thing, I don't know what it's called, to a cigar female thing and then I can plug it in and, and, and charge so that is brilliant and Let's put this back. So, with these uh, power banks, I'll be able to keep these battery uh, packs fully charged. I'm not going to put it on the pulk while I'm walking because if I flip around, I might destroy cables, I might destroy solar panels. So, all this is my precious. And because of that, I'm carrying all the, uh, like the energy in the Peli case. 1520 so that it's not going to be damaged. With these power banks I can charge these batteries um, and I can charge my uh, microphones, I can charge my GoPros and I can charge my cameras. The reason why I mark the batteries is, uh, is because uh, when I use a, a battery 
when I have a battery that's not used, it'll be sitting like this. And I can see now I take out number nine because I have three different cameras and it's, easy, it's easier to, to keep a track on it. Otherwise I'll end up with a lot of battery with, without any numbers and I don't know which one I used and not used. I'll take the battery up, put it in the camera. When it's used, I turn it upside down. That means that I know all of these where I can't see the number is used. So that is the reason for doing that. I still uh, some of my numbers have fallen off, so I need to make some new ones. So these chargers, together with these batteries, is going to work fine. And then I have two spare chargers, in two different brands, just in case of there will be like a general failure with all these. The cables that comes uh, that I have bought to replace them is here, and I try to keep all the charging cables red uh, because that makes it easier for me. So uh, that was all about the batteries. I'm actually waiting for the post to arrive with a 60 watt solar uh, panel uh, just so we have a lot of power but uh, I've been waiting for a week now and they have uh, they have screwed something up there so it's not it's not awesome let me just clean that lens so um hmm. yeah that was uh, solar panels and uh, I'm really, really looking forward. I've tested it in Norway and I'm really hoping that everything works up there. But I mean, why shouldn't it? Uh, let's move to the sound. As for the sound, uh, I'm using the Rode VideoMic Pro uh, Plus. Uh, uh, it's very good because it, it, it actually powers from the camera. Uh, I'm also bringing the v Video Micro because it's good for uh, some blocking and as a spare mic because there's basically nothing that can break in there. Uh, on my GoPro, uh, we can zoom a little more in on that later, but on the GoPro uh, I'm having this case uh, with an ND filter and a little microphone here. Um, let's, let's see that a little closer. This is basically just a little microphone that I've clipped on this case for the GoPro. Um, see? It goes into the side and then I have uh, bought this totally overpriced GoPro sound thing that let me plug in this microphone which is just a little thing that goes in there and I haven't tried it actually so uh, I'm looking forward to to that here on the front side I've put some of this very heavy duty uh, sticky tape and that should be fine and then I've made so I can mount it on my camera. Here's an ND filter so I don't get this jaggery footage from the from the GoPro. This one slides up so I can take out, take out the GoPro and replace battery and I can charge the, the GoPro directly from the USB-C port which is awesome. So uh, furthermore I'm uh, having this microphone here that I'm actually talking in now and that is the Sennheiser system with the uh, with a little thing I have in my pocket. I use that if it's like extremely uh, windy and uh, that'll give a good quality. Uh, for the camera equipment, uh, as I said, I had to make a, a, a kind of drastic change because I, I changed my uh, D5 with um, first with a D850 uh, for my main camera because I have the option to actually uh, use these batteries. These batteries are also used by the a Nikon Z6 and the Nikon Z7 and a lot of other Nikon cameras, so that is awesome. Second, I don't need the speed of the D5 and I don't need the low light performance of the D5 compared to this because we have midnight sun and I would rather have the extreme high resolution uh, images here so I can make huge prints. Uh, so I got the D850 and that is going to be one of my main cameras. The other main camera is going to be the Nikon Z7, uh, which I have here. Um, unfortunately, they uh, didn't come with a battery pack, which I find extremely weird because like, there's so many people wanting the battery pack and why should that come like a year later or something? But nevertheless, it's not there and I'll be totally fine. Uh, a few, uh, I want to talk about a few modification I have to do with these cameras uh, because um, it's not easy to use with gloves. So let's just take a closer look down here. Because I'm using gloves for almost everything, a camera like this can be extremely challenging to actually use. 
uh, um, a few reasons uh, for that actually. The first one is the um, um, memory card because sometimes when you have a memory card and it's cold, now it pops out, but you see it's sometimes it can be stuck in there and you just can't. And even though it's there, sometimes you with the gloves you can't uh, get it out and you have to get your, your fingers like this and it can be almost impossible. So what I have done is uh, I have made this, just I've just put a, a little piece of uh, gaffer tape on the, the memory card. And then when I get it in here, I basically don't use the clicking function. I just click it in and then I do like this and take it out without using the, the clicking function. So this little piece of uh, tape, let me drag it out easily and I just put it like so there and that's fine. So here it's easy for me to get the card in and out. And I'm just going to put that on, on all cards. Just wanted to test it in Norway before. The other thing is extremely annoying because this one is very easy to use when you are with your small little office fingers. You can pop this out and then you can open this and the battery comes out. The problem is that when you are out, if you can't like get it show, but it's really not nice made, I think, because how are you supposed to do that with just the, the tiniest glove? Because not even do you want to press it, that's easy because you can use everything to, to, to press it, just a little thing on your, on your camera strap, but it doesn't, it doesn't come out. I modif modified the, the batteries like this, um, basically with a, with a little thingy here, a little piece of tape that I have folded like, this will prevent the little lock here from actually locking the thing. And that might make it possible to drop the bit battery if you get this up, but if you get this up by accident, you're really lucky. But that does like so, I click it. That means that the moment I press here, it will jump out by itself. And I tried that in Norway now, and it works fine. That means now, let me just use something just for the test purpose. Like I can just do so, and it'll jump out. Where if I have a normal battery and I press here, nothing will really happen because I need to drag. So I, I like these uh, small modifications. So I'm bringing the mirrorless camera because uh, filming is a big part of this uh, expedition and uh, producing uh, um, uh, something that I can share with you is a big part of this expedition beside making photos and making nice video. And the, now I tried it in, in, in Norway with a ptarmigan and with a musk oxen and I love to be able to switch very fast from photo to video and just shoot and what I see is what I get and I don't have to take my eyes away from the viewfinder and I can't see anything in the sun because of the reflection. I can just keep my eyes in the viewfinder on the, on the set uh, six and six, set seven and um, down to minus 15 now it works fine. Let's see how it works in minus 30 degrees Celsius. So that was the cameras. I'm bringing my uh, strap, the, uh, the Peak Design strap I'm bringing my uh, adapt two adapters that goes from F mount to the uh, Nikon Z mount, 1.4 uh, version 3 teleconverter. I'm using the 1635. Uh, I, I really don't like this lens because uh, it's uh, it's built so bad. Like <laughs> this focus ring is is oh sorry for the uh, to say it, but it's just crap. And I know uh, I had sent it to repair and they said that I haven't treated it very well uh, and that some soda has come in it. And first of all, I don't drink soda when I'm photographing. And second of all, it's a professional grade camera so it should be kind of weatherproof. So I don't, uh, water resistant or splash proof. I don't know how the, anything could get in there, but never mind. It's really, I don't like the lens uh, because it's compared to the old Nikons, it's just like really not nice, but I'm bringing it anyway because I have it and because I like the 1635 and it has a built-in uh, vibration reduction and it's good for photographing into the in the tent and for some landscapes so uh, yeah that's coming it has been on all my trips and it's also coming on this one and the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter is also coming on the trip to 
give me the the flexibility to have a camera lying on my pool all the time where I can just grab it and uh, and photograph. And this is going to sit on the Nikon D850 and the 600 millimeter is going to sit on the Nikon Z7. The Nikon Z6 is going to be my uh, vlogging camera. Uh, so that is the camera setup. A big 600 millimeter. Uh, my new 600mm, the FL version, a little lighter, uh, a newer and hopefully, uh, yeah, very good. I have been happy so far, especially because the uh, vibration reduction is uh, way more silent and it's uh, better for me to make uh, videos that way. This guy, uh, instead of my Mavic Pro, uh, this one is lighter and I think I'll be happy for a little less weight. My size uh, binocular 8. Um, 842 uh, Victory Series. Uh, I've had that for many years now, uh, more than 10 years, and um, it's always with me. Hopefully, I will at some point get a glimpse of a wolf through this binocular. I, uh, I really hope so. So please cross your fingers for me. To be fair, I didn't want to spend like $3,000 on buying uh, enough XQD cards for these cameras for the entire trip. Uh, and that wouldn't be enough when I'm making video. So I had to make a system where I can transfer my photos uh, to my hard drives. So what I did was uh, I planned to bring my old uh, MacBook Air, which has been on uh, trips before. Uh, but there was too much going on with charging that. So what I did was I, I, uh, I got the new MacBook Pro uh, uh, 15, uh, 13-inch, I think it is, um, with a little uh, cover on and, of course, the Velcro for my hard drives because I can charge that through USB-C with these power banks. And as I uh, my test shows that I can... In one power bank, I can do a fully charge, and this computer is only for transferring files to my hard drives and to check the footage, the sound, just randomly every so often, so I don't have a defect microphone, a defect something. Uh, so uh, look for sensor spots on the video and all that kind of stuff. Furthermore, it's nice to have because in the airport, when we go to Tor Toronto or Igraluit and on the way back, I can start looking through the footage because that will be a massive amount I come home with. The computer go into the sleeves and down to my Peli case, the orange Peli case. This charger is only for airport purposes, so let's just forget that. Cables and, oh, I forgot this. Let me just... Let me just rewind a little bit. The cleaning kit, I have a blower, I have a, the um, sensor swap, uh, cleaning swap from VSGO, and some liquid down here. And my little female thing, they use for putting things in, 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 in the face. Uh, I don't touch it with my hands, but this one is to remove dust and things from the lenses. So, last thing, my hard drives. Today the post will arrive with a uh, SanDisk SSD 2TB. It's so small, it has a USB-C connector, and that is going to be attached to my computer all the time. This is where I transfer my files to, and I have uh, uh, two reasons for that. I want the transfer speed to be as fast as possible, because it will save some batteries on my computer. That's uh, thing number one. Number two, my Lassie discs are so huge and, and bulky. And um, I actually think for my purpose now, the SanDisk uh, Extreme Portable Things uh, SSD are a better choice. Um, it's only two terabyte and I probably think I will uh, fill them up. So therefore I have two backup discs. When the two terabyte is full, if it's full, I copy it to the blue and I copy the mirror the blue to the red. And of course I'm going to use a lot of power on that, but then when the file are over there, I'm going to delete the two terabyte SSD and I put these away in my Peli case and I use the SSD again 
So that is like the SSD will be my buffer holding the files and I'll copy them as they come over to this one. That means that I always have two backups and this one I'll copy to this one. So I'll always have like three backups and only when I have to delete the two terabyte, I only have two backups, but it should be fine. These are five terabyte spinning drives, but they are, I have used them many times. They are, they are really good, the Seagate ones. I have the, because the, that's an old story, Apple just, just decided to trash everything else but the USB-C, so uh, you have to faff around with uh, one of these. And um, I have this. If this one fails, uh, I can uh, connect cameras, GPS, everything directly to the USB-C port. But uh, this one is nice, so I can take my SD cards and micro SD cards. A few other USB-C to USB-C cables from the Anchor as spare. USB-C, no, a, a normal XQD uh, card reader for my Nikon cameras. And then my uh, one of my card bags, the other one is downstairs, with uh, all the SD, micro SD, XQD cards. That was uh, like almost a video marathon. And um, I hope you could use some of this as inspiration for your own trips, uh, that you got something out of the video. The reason why I'm not uh, posting small pictures and text from up there, which I could do through the satellite phone, I cannot post anything video or anything high res, but I could post a little thing or make some uh, blog uh, thing, but I've actually chosen not to do it because I remember my time in the dog sled patrol in Greenland, 26 months up there, four and a half months long uh, sled trip, being disconnected from the world and just focus on being present, be there with the dogs, with the camera in beautiful nature. And that means extremely uh, much to me. So I've decided that I'm only calling home, like I've my, my family, I'll call home for like two times a month to tell that I'm okay. The rest of the time, I'm not going to bother about uh, uh, sending a diary home or anything. I just want to be there in the wilderness of Canada, surrounded by snow and ice and maybe wolves, maybe get a glimpse of the wolf, but uh, there'll be like uh, hares and muskox and hopefully I can't wait. So I've decided to not do anything from there. I am so excited now because I am ready to go uh, to Canada now. I'm ready for one of the biggest, hopefully, experience in, in my life uh, with a camera. And I can't wait to share all these amazing moments with you. Remember to press the little bell thing next to the subscribe button because then you will receive a notification when I upload the first videos from uh, the LSMA 2019 expedition. Until then, go out and make a lot of good photos. Enjoy the spring, enjoy the beginning and the summer. And then as uh, only one thing to say, and that is probably see you out there. <laughs>